Chapter 34 The Ferryman Lydia and Ollie walked along behind the dune for some way, to avoid giving away where the others might be. They clambered up the sand and made their way towards the water's edge. The cloaked figure had tied the boat up at the far end of the landing stage. Its red ochre sails were furled and lashed. As they reached the wooden pier, they could see the boat was open, having no deck. There was a sort of tent arranged for shelter in the centre of the boat, below the boom of the mainsail. In the bows and the stern there were wooden benches. A tall figure emerged, crouching from the shelter. It stopped and stood up straight, then fell still as if prepared for a lengthy wait. Lydia and Oddie looked at each other, then approached the boat. The figure, the ferryman they presumed, had the hood of its dark cloak raised and pulled well forward. It stood motionless, facing the bow of the boat, side on to the approaching couple. As they walked the length of the creaking stage, the ferryman did not move. At the end of the stage they were close enough to get an accurate impression of the creature's height. Although its feet were on a lower level than theirs, it towered over them. It was hard to tell with the billowing of his cloak in the light breeze, but he impressed them as being skeletally thin. Hello, Lydia ventured, unsure what language the boatman might use. Hail to you both, the creature said. The reply astonished Lydia and Oddie. While the figure's voice was deep in pitch, it was mild and musical. We're friends, Oddie tried. I am glad that you are at ease with one another, the man answered, sounding confused. He had not moved even to look at them. Oddie tried again. I meant we mean you no harm, he said. We are prepared to be friendly towards you. That is wise of you, the ferryman assured him. I have nothing to fear from you, powerful though one of you might be. If we are to be friendly, then you will have nothing to fear from me. I believe you wish to cross the sea. Yes, Lydia admitted. Yes, please. Can you take us? I can. It may not seem so, but once all ten of you are aboard, you should be comfortable. There are only nine of us now, Lydia corrected him. Would your cat say there was only one wishing to travel? The ferryman asked. An old friend of mine taught me you should disregard no one for simply being a cat at this moment. Ha! Huh, Lydia scoffed. Pretty sure Xander would say there was only one wishing to travel. What would you want from us as payment for crossing the sea with you? Oddie asked. Ah! What do you have that is of any real value? The ferryman asked in return. They looked at each other again. Honestly, Lydia said. Each other. Oddie gasped. The boatman chuckled. The best answer of all, young witch. You are wise. Your friend suspects that I mean to trick you, that I may claim one of your friends as payment. I will not. Good, said Lydia. We wouldn't give you any of them. The cat, perhaps? The ferryman suggested. We'd rather walk, Lydia decreed. The boatman flipped back his hood and laughed. It was a hearty laugh. His face was slender and lined, though by exposure to the weather rather than by age. He seemed smaller now. His eyes were on a level with theirs, though his feet were still lower, being in the boat. What sort of payment can we give you? Lydia asked. I need no payment, he replied. How do you survive? Oddie asked. Why do you ferry people if you take no fee? The ferryman furrowed his brow. I exist as a ferryman. It is my nature, not something to be traded for trinkets. The sea and the land provide me with their bounty for sustenance. What better way is there to be? They shrugged. My name's Lydia, Lydia announced herself. You may call me Aaron, the ferryman smiled. He held up a hand, palm facing them, in greeting. It had six long fingers. I'm called Odysseus. Oddie added. The ferryman tilted his head and peered at him. Ah, you're back. You took your time, he said, then explained. I am making an old wayfarer's jest. Oddie grinned. Yes, I hoped you were. Shall I call for the others? Lydia asked Aaron. You will find that your cat has already issued the invitation, I think. 
They followed the ferryman's gaze and looked behind them. The students were approaching across the beach, Xander in the lead. How do we come aboard? Lydia asked. There's no gangway. You are magical, Aaron said. I am sure you have your ways. We're trying not to use magic, Lydia disclosed, in case it attracts unwanted attention. Aaron nodded. I see the wisdom in that. I believe it may be in your best interests. Lydia sighed. Thanks. Nice to know I'm not being paranoid. I only believe, the ferryman pointed out. I do not know. Lydia and Oddie shared a look and frowned. I am a ferryman, Aaron went on. That is my nature. I carry people from one side of the sea to the other. No help is offered beyond that. I can offer no other help. If the Watcher himself needed me to carry him, I would do so. I would not tell him of your people, nor will I tell you of his. You may trust me to carry you as passengers. Trust me no further than that. It is the way it has to be. Thank you, Lydia said. That I can understand. We're still your friends if you'll allow us to be. Aaron smiled. Do you have a gangway or something to help us get aboard? Oddie asked. Something like that, Odysseus? The boatman asked, pointing to a wooden gangway with a low handrail, which they were sure had not been between the boat and landing stage a moment earlier. Yes, something like that would be helpful, Oddie chuckled. I shall see what I can do, Aaron said. They heard the tramping of feet on the boards of the landing stage. Lydia turned to them as Oddie tested the gangway. This is Aaron, she told them. He's the ferryman. He's going to take us across the sea. Aaron, these are... Sophie, Freddy, Shona, Christy, Jimmy, Corbin, Dev, and Xander, Aaron said. I am a ferryman. It is in my interests to know my passengers. One might say it is my nature. Hi, Aaron, Hi, Aaron said some of them. Others waved. If you would board, please, said Aaron. It is traditional for passengers to be on the boat when it sails, if they wish to go where the boat is going. The sky was clear, and the day was growing warmer. Aaron advised that the tented area would be cooler. Christy and Shona wanted to sit in the bows for a while, but the rest took cover under the awning. Aaron sat in the stern, holding the long wooden handle of the tiller. The sails raised and set themselves at a nod from the ferryman. The ropes tied to the landing stage leapt aboard and wound themselves into neat coils. Without drama, the boat pulled away from the stage and Aaron steered it out to sea. A while later, Freddy went to sit with the ferryman. Hi, Aaron, he said. I'm Freddy. I've never been on a boat like this before. Hail and well met, Fredlington, Aaron smiled. I have. Have? Been in a boat like this before. Freddy laughed. Well, that's good. I was hoping you had. Is it a long way to where we're going? Distance depends on many things, young Fredlington, Aaron warned. If you measure it in the lengths of furrows, you arrive at an answer a farmer may understand. If you measure it in the passage of the sun, a guard may prefer that answer. Okay, Freddy replied. And if you measure it in hardship, Aaron continued, then our journey may be longer than is usual. Why? What hardships? Aaron raised an arm and pointed forward. Freddy turned to look. Above the horizon a line of dark clouds towered like a distant mountain range. The line stretched across his view as far as he could see. Should we turn back? Freddy asked. Wait for it to pass. Aaron gave him a puzzled smile. You cannot travel forwards by turning back, Fredlington. And we both know this storm will not pass till it has fulfilled its intent. Its sire is prepared to wait indefinitely for you. That is in his interests. Turn back and you give him his desire. By him, you mean the Great Watcher, Freddy surmised. 
He has many names, Aaron said, as do we all. Freddy sat on his hands. He could feel the grain of the weathered wooden bench. He looked at Aaron. The ferryman was surveying the horizon once more. He watched and made fine adjustments to the tiller. Freddy gazed ahead to the storm clouds. They were still there, no closer, but inevitable. Are we going to make it through, Aaron? he pleaded. I am a ferryman, Fred Lington, Aaron reminded him. We have resolved to be friends, and I have told you of the bounds of that friendship. I am a ferryman, that is my nature. Friends or not, I will do everything I may to ensure my passengers reach their destination. I can do no more, but I will do no less. There is one thing I can tell you, which I hope will bring you comfort. I have never died doing this. Not yet, at least. Freddy shrugged and smiled. Can't say fairer than that. Aaron continued to steer. They sat in silence for a while and watched the horizon. It was unmoving, clouds and all. How long will it be before the storm reaches us? Freddy asked the ferryman. Aaron turned his head to look at the young man. First you ask me about distance, which is complex enough. Now you quiz me about time, which is beyond the grasp of the wise. Time is a consequence of consequences, caused by causality. Every tiny cause has an effect. Every tiny effect has its cause. Time emerges from the flow of these interlinked causes and effects. How fast that flow seems depends on the weight you give to the consequences. It depends upon the degree to which you care. Do you eat because it is a certain hour of the day, or because the tasks at which you have toiled have caused you hunger? Each of us approaches it differently. How can my time be yours? The storm will reach us. We will see its approach. We will prepare as well as we do and we will succeed as much as we do not fail. Consequences, Redlington. So, Freddy asked. It will seem long because you care, Aaron said, but it will feel short because you fear for your friends. You care. You know this. It was a stupid question. It is said there are no stupid questions, no stupid answers. Only stupid people, Aaron went on. But neither of us is stupid. I will say that it will be dark when the storm hits. Is that because it will be night time or because the storm will make it dark? Freddy persisted. Yes, Aaron smiled. Now you understand. Freddy blew out his breath like he was deflating. Shall I tell the others a storm's coming? he asked. You are one of their number, Master Fredlington. I am a ferryman. Consequences. Freddy sat a little longer. It was still sunny, though the breeze was cooler than before. I'm going to tell them, he told the ferryman. They'll make their own consequences. And so time flows on, Aaron said, as Freddy stood. Freddy turned and smiled for a moment. Then he went into the shelter and sat next to Lydia. Aaron says a storm's coming, he told her. I know, she replied. Not sure when, though. It'll get here when it gets here, Lydia said. We'll know when it's close. Shall I ask Aaron how long we have? Oddie suggested. Lydia looked at Freddy and smiled. What do you think, Fredster? Ah, oh, silly me, he shrugged. Forgot to ask. Oddie sighed and left towards the stern. You were listening, weren't you? Freddy asked Lydia. She smiled. You're so bad, he told her. I don't know why we all love you so much. Get your wet weather gear on and hurry, Lydia called. We need to get this tent down before the wind gets any stronger. Oddie shone a couple of torches to help them change in the gathering gloom. The boat was bucking and rolling. Waves slapped against the bows. 
with all of them trying to dress at once. It was chaos. Lydia threw the boys out into the open air, while the girls dressed for the weather. Freddy complained bitterly that he was getting wet from the spray. Then the storm distracted him, and he was too busy hugging Xander to go in and change with the other boys. They took down the shelter as Freddy was still pulling on its waterproof jacket. They sat on the thwarts, the boards which ran across the boat and provided seating, and huddled together in twos and threes. Those at the edge of the boat hung on as it rolled and tossed. Freddy and Xander went to sit near Aaron. Apart from having pulled his hood up, Aaron looked the same as before, a calm constant amid the tempest. How come the sails are only half the size they were, Aaron? Freddy inquired. Wouldn't we be better going as fast as we can to get through the storm as quickly as possible? We are already going as fast as we can, the ferryman informed him. If I raised the sails any further, they would catch so much of the wind that its force would turn us over. Drowning is a poor way to escape a storm. Just let the man get on with the sailing, Freddy, Xander advised. I suspect he has more experience than you. The cat is as wise as he is handsome, Aaron noted. Thank you, Xander replied. It is kind of you to be so complimentary and observant. It is kind of you to take my words as a compliment, Aaron observed. Lydia clambered towards the stern and sat opposite Freddy. Xander strutted forwards to see whose turn it was to cuddle him. Sophie was good for his bruised ego. Aaron, how best can the rest of us help? Lydia asked. Without using magic, that is. My dear lady, he answered, the best thing would be for you to all remain in the boat. There are cleats and eyelets, which you may use to rig lifelines. It may help to tie yourselves into your seats. Just take care to ensure you can release your bonds in case we capsize. Is that likely? Lydia asked in alarm. We are at sea, in a small boat, sailing through a storm, Aaron pointed out. Many things are possible, most of them unwelcome. I have never, to the best of my knowledge, died under such circumstances. There is an unprecedented vehemence to this storm, however. Perhaps you have enemies in far-off places. Well, that's no huge surprise, Freddy remarked. Aaron, Lydia said, I mean this is no slight on your skill as a ferryman. I am aware I have limits, he assured her. Lydia smiled. OK, so if there comes a time when you think we need to help, please let me know. I will use magic if I have to. Agreed, Aaron said. Though there may be consequences. Oh, my God, Freddy exclaimed. Don't get started on consequences again. I'll tell the others to strap in, Lydia agreed. And I'll take Freddy with me. Not on my account, Lydia, Aaron said. Freddy will be as safe with me as anywhere else in this boat. I enjoy his company. Lydia grinned. We all do. Keeping low, Lydia scrambled forwards to the others. Missing you already, Freddy called after her. Lydia made a rapid and ambiguous hand gesture without looking behind. 